Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to talk about the density matrix formulation of quantum mechanics. Density matrices are the most convenient way to discuss quantum statistical mechanics and in particular they are extremely useful in describing composite systems. Before we jump into density matrices, it will be helpful to introduce some standard Brockett quantum mechanics and some observables to keep in the back of our mind for intuition. It's useful to consider in particular a simple example of say a single spin one half particle and here we're going to focus on its spin degrees of freedom. When the spin degrees of freedom interact with, uh, with an electromagnetic field, the poly matrices come into play. So here we have the poly Z, the poly X, and the poly Y matrix, where in particular we have chosen a basis in such a way that the poly Z matrix is diagonal. Now its basis vectors are given here with the spin up in the Z direction and the spin down direction um, being written here as column vectors. And in particular, we can re-express the basis vectors for say the um, the poly X matrix in the in either direction in terms of these two vectors, but in the positive direction, we can write it in the following way. The states that we are used to using in quantum mechanics are so-called pure states. For the space we are interested in here, any state can be written as a linear combination of the up and down vectors in the z direction, where a and b are complex numbers who mo whose modulus squared sum to one. A and B uh, can be referred to as the probability amplitudes, where their modulus squared are the probabilities that the system is in a particular configuration. If we perform an ensemble of measurements on the system, we will find that the mean or the expected value, for example, of the poly Z matrix will be given by the following formula. If we want to study how a quantum system changes in time, we usually refer ourselves to the Schrodinger equation, where this operator H is called the Hamiltonian, and it tells us about the total energy in the system and how things in the system interact with each other. The easiest way to solve this problem is to first solve the eigenvalue problem, which involves finding the eigenvectors and the eigenvalues of the Hamiltonian H, where we label the different values of the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors uh, with the label K. Doing so allows us to know that the eigenvectors when plugged into the Schrodinger equation just pick up a phase in time depending on the energy they correspond to. Now to a more general situation with some generic state psi. We can decompose psi in terms of the energy eigenbasis where Cm is given by the inner product of the energy eigenvector labeled by M and psi itself. We can then time evolve the state by simply time evolving the energy eigenkets. Tracking the expectation value of an observable in this way is quite easy. Simply applying the state vector in time to both sides of the matrix gives the following equation where we have labeled the matrix entries of A by the energy eigenbasis in the following way. Okay, so now that we have covered the basics of quantum mechanics, let us briefly review some properties of the trace of a matrix. Suppose I give you a basis of states labeled by J that form a complete orthonormal basis. Then I write the trace of a matrix A in the following way. The trace is a linear mapping, which tells us that we can separate the trace of the sum of two matrices apart like this, and we can also pull scalar multiples outside of the trace. When I am taking the trace of two matrices multiplied by each other, the trace is invariant under swapping the two matrices inside of the trace. Okay, so we made it this far. Uh, we're finally ready to introduce density matrices. So going from a pure state uh, represented by a ket, we can introduce the density matrix, which is a completely equivalent way to represent the state of a quantum system. The density matrix in this context is just the outer product of the state with itself. The expectation value um, is rewritten in terms of a trace, but it is mathematically equivalent to our earlier expression. The density matrix has two fundamental properties uh, that we will see here, one being that its trace is one. In the context of a pure state, which we're considering here, uh, this is actually extremely straightforward to show. 
Um, and it is also a positive operator, meaning that if I take any state vector from our state space and perform the following operation, then the result is always greater than or equal to zero, which is also very straightforward to show. From the Schrodinger equation, we can derive the von Neumann equation of time evolution seen here. The von Neumann equation features the commutation relationship between the Hamiltonian and the density matrix itself. Then the expectation value for an observable in time can be rewritten in the following way, where the density matrix rho evolves with the Hamiltonian being applied to it in time, uh, as seen here on the bottom left. This can similarly be re-expressed in the basis of the energy eigenvalues, um, as seen here below, where rho mn in the following expression um, can be written in the following way, uh, where we have just re-expressed its entries in terms of the energy eigenbasis. Now we can talk about a situation that's actually quite interesting. What if we are unsure of what pure state our system is in? That is, what if we are somehow ignorant to what pure state we are in? Then we can describe a statistical ensemble of pure states, which we call a mixed state. The ensemble is written as a sum of pure states with probabilities pj, and of course the probabilities are greater than zero, and they sum to one. Mixed states are also trace one and are positive operators, showing this is essentially identical to the pure state case, um, and the dynamics and the expectation values work in, a, in an identical way as well. Interestingly, it's not completely correct to interpret PJ as the probability of being in a particular state labeled by J. To see this, consider the following example. Let rho be a mixed state written in the following way. We say that the system is in the state down with probability four fifths and in the up direction with the probability one fifth. Now, that is all well and good, but what if I prepared two other states? Let us define the two new state vectors, a, b, with the following uh, probability amplitudes of being in the down or up state. Then if we prepare these states with probability 1 half, we see that we get the same density matrix as before. Working this out, expanding the definitions of a and b allows us to arrive at our original density matrix. Therefore, two different ensembles of pure states can, can give rise to the same mixed state. And we must be careful when we inter interpret PJ as strictly probabilities of a particular system being strictly in its associated pure state in the sum. So if I give you a matrix, how would you tell if it's pure or mixed? Mathematically, there is quite a simple way to check. We simply square the matrix and take its trace. If the trace is still one, we say that the density matrix is pure. If it is less than one, then we say it's mixed. Simple, right? Um, and this is actually independent of time. Time evolution conserves the purity of your state as seen below. So thanks everyone for watching. I hope you learned something and found this useful. If you like the video and want to see more videos about statistical mechanics and related topics, please like and describe and feel free to leave a comment below.